Hey, what up guys? We got a piece of the puzzle for the truck behind us, so let's check out what we got. Before we get too deep into this video, I want to know where you guys are watching from. So, let me know and I'll put a red pin on the map. Last week I got three comments on uh, where you guys are watching from. The first one is hard to pronounce. I'm going to say it's Delonga, Delonga, Georgia. Whew, that's a tough one. D-H-L. O-N-E-G-A, Georgia. So I looked it up on a map because I gotta figure out where the heck this stuff's from and coming from. And I think it's on the northern end of Georgia. So we'll put a little pin right there. And next we got Cheyenne, Wyoming, which is the bottom corner. And there's actually a spot for Cheyenne on this map. So we'll put her in right there. And the last one is Salcombe, Washington, which I know exactly where that's at, but this map is so small I can't really see much. It's uh, below Olympia, I can tell you that much. So we'll stick you right there. So we got a nice spread across America already. I can see some flaws in my plan already. For one, this map is extremely small. And uh, most of my viewers are going to be in the US and Canada, I believe. So I might need to get just a, a bigger US map if this uh, works out right. So let me know where you're from. This is our new workbench. We finally got something here in the garage. Now this is way bigger than I wanted it to be. You can see it sticks way out. I wanted a max three feet out, so cut a foot off of that because this is four feet. But anyways, uh, this is what we got to work with. It was a good deal. It's all metal. It's extremely heavy, so it'll work perfect. And uh, it's great for welding on or just, you know, doing normal shop stuff on. So this is what we got. And as you can see, I got it sitting on some stuff. I got some paint on top because I want to get some paint on this just to make it look a little nicer. Uh, I'm going to leave the top bare metal just for welding and different things. So yeah, let's clean this thing up real quick. All right, now we got a decent looking workbench. Let's go take a closer look at this thing real quick. All right, better show you uh, this before I get it covered in, in junk and you can't see it anymore. But I just gave it a quick uh, red paint job there to kind of match the, the toolboxes and the cabinet over there. Try and Try and keep things looking nice. Uh, the top I'm going to leave bare metal. You can see it's real rusty right now. It's just a surface rust. Um, I'll leave it bare for welding and different things like that. So, but it looks good. It's it's definitely solid. It's it's what I needed. It's a little too big. I don't like how how deep it is. Um, you know, obviously, if I had a giant shop, it'd be great. But in this little garage, it's just taking up too much space. But it'll work for now. Uh, I wish it was, you know. At least 12 inches less, you know, even only, this is four feet deep, even only two feet deep is, is basically what I was going to build. If I had to make my own workbench, I was going to build a two foot deep one because that's all I really need. But hey, you can't pass up something like this. So here it is. Looks good. It's a good addition to the shop and uh, it gives me something to work on finally. So we got everything laid out here. Uh, this is a disc brake conversion kit for the rear on a uh, 14 bolt. Uh, full float rear axle. So I went and upgraded to the parking brake calipers and well let me just show you what each little piece does here real quick. So to begin with we got this from Lugnut 4x4. That's a great company. They do uh, disc brake kits for all sorts of stuff so if you need disc brakes check them out. Uh, lots of different options you can do to upgrade your kit and whatever. So the first thing is the uh, brackets. We got big brackets. I painted these orange. They come bare. So I'm just trying to get some color under there. Those are looking good. Nice, solid, super thick. Uh, obviously we got rotors. I upgraded to the longer studs so that, uh, you know, it's a little better for aluminum wheels and whatnot, the factory studs. So it's not focusing in. These, uh, the factory studs aren't very long and you don't, can't really get the full uh, lug nut engagement on there when you're using a thicker wheel like an aluminum wheel so that was a good upgrade I needed. And then it comes with like the brackets, it's custom brackets for calipers because these calipers also are parking brake calipers. So you can see that little nut in the middle, that's where a lever is going to attach and uh, actually brings the piston in and out for parking brake. These are actually uh, Cadillac calipers. So obviously you get some hardware kits, you know, bags. I got the kit that has the rear axle seals, because, or the hub seals, I should say. So that's kind of important because these things always leak on the hubs if you've ever worked on these trucks. 
And last, I went with the braided uh, brake lines. And just to show progress on everything, uh, these are the front spring plates. So I got these all cleaned up. They were extremely rusty, so I, you know, needle scaled them like we did with the axles. And uh, I'm gonna paint those. I'm just kind of waiting on a uh, Pour 15 product to show up. And you can see we've been working on our new workbench. Uh, it's extremely big, but it's coming in handy because you can kind of lay things out like this now. And you saw previously where we took this thing apart, so these are the old drums. I'm going to have to beat out these studs and separate the drum from the center hub because obviously we need the center hub still. So I'm going to work on doing that tonight, just get everything separated, and then I can clean up those hubs and paint them and, and make them look nice. A yeah, quick update on the Corvette since we're here. Uh, I've just been driving it. It's been great. Nothing too crazy. I did pick up recently a, uh, a tire kit, tire plug patch kit, whatever you want to call it, because I did... I don't think I ever mentioned it, but I uh, I took off the, the old run flat tires off this thing and I put these, what are they, Nitto 555 NTs or something like that. They're pretty good tire. So those are not run flat, so this car has no spare tire or anything in it. So that's where I picked up a patch kit. And we just got a small little slime air compressor. So these Rhino USA branded stuff that I'm about to dump out on the ground here is actually pretty nice. So I just this one here is their small kit. Figured it'd be great for the vet and throw it in the back. Uh, you don't need don't need a whole lot for it because it's a you know I just want to in case I come out to my car. Things falling apart in here. If I come out to my car, you know, from going to the store and you know it's got a flat tire or come out from after work and the tire's flat. I need to get home. You know, you don't want to have to call a tow truck every time you get a not that I ever get flat tires, but you never know. So it's a good little bit of security there. It just broke open again. Uh, this company, Rhino USA, they also make a lot of other products, so that's pretty cool. A lot of recovery type products, uh, yank straps and different things for off-road mainly. So that's kind of nice. And I also did pick up their big tire repair kit. Kind of the same thing, just has more, more goodies in it. Comes with a lot more uh, these rope style plugs and then uh, just actually comes with tire, you know, valve stem caps and uh, actually comes with the Schrader cores if you happen to lose one off-roading when you're airing down or, or whatever You know it comes with all these extra parts. So it's kind of nice So I'm going to put this in the Ram and I'm going to keep that in there because that truck has 37 inch tires And I still only have a factory size underneath so that also kind of doesn't have a spare tire So this might get me back on the road easy also and then I need to find a slightly bigger air compressor to keep in that truck And that'll be good for because I plan on actually kind of you know, doing some off-road exploring and different things like that. So one of the biggest reasons in my book to get rid of these drum brakes is how big they are. These things are massive. So uh, I'm curious to see how much weight savings this is gonna do. So we got the scales. All right, so you can see we got Aunt Punky's health meter here zeroed out. So let's see. You're probably not gonna be able to see because it's just gonna completely block it, but we'll move it. We have 66, 65, 66 pounds. Let me show you. There you go, you gotta read upside down. So uh, 60 and 70 is the next mark. So you're right in between there, right about 66 pounds. So I'm curious how much weight this is gonna save when we do the disc brakes. And then uh, another thing you have to count for is the backing plate and the shoes. So we'll toss those on there also. That takes us up to Jesus, 90 pounds, look at that. 90 pounds just in brakes. So I do have to swap that hub over to the, to the new brakes, but uh, we'll try to measure everything when we're done. All right, so the way I gotta disassemble these since I don't have a shop press in here, and uh, I'm not reusing these studs, I'm not reusing these old drums, I only need the hub. So we're gonna do it the best way we know how, which is just to smash them out with a hammer. Uh, when we put them back together, I'm gonna take them somewhere and just have them pressed all together just to make my life easier and yeah, just to make my life easier.
All right, and this is junk. Uh, I might actually hang on to these because because they're so heavy and they're flat, they're pretty wide. They and they have holes. They'll make a good mount. So I have an idea of making a use this as the base with a pole, and I might mount like my uh, my uh, bench grinder on it, and then I can move it around the shop and whatnot. So I might do that. So we'll hang on to these for a little while. Let's just throw the pile of new parts on there to see what we're gonna weigh. So before we had 66 pounds of just drum and hub. Now we have 40 pounds. We're looking pretty good already, right? Oh, technically I don't have the studs in there. So now we're talking, oh, 41, 42 pounds. Now we add our bracket and our caliper, and that's basically everything. So now we are, oh, 57, 58 pounds it looks like. So 58 pounds versus what was it, 90 before? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. And that's per corner, so you can double that because that's gonna be across the whole rear end. Yo, it's one week later and uh, we got our uh, hubs and rotors all pressed together. Let's give you a closer look. So as you can see, we got the new studs all pressed in, the uh, new rotors are pressed onto the hubs, and the hubs are looking great with the fresh new paint and everything. So this part is done, I pretty much just gotta put these aside. Now on another note is I actually finally, what lighting sucks over here, I finally ordered the suspension and steering for this truck. It's gonna take a while, I'm gonna get some parts in as they, as they go over the next few weeks probably, or months. Uh, the thing that takes the longest is the springs. Uh, I'm still keeping it leaf sprung, but they're uh, like custom spring rate. So they take into effect like what motor you have and you know any, any other mods you're doing to the truck and whatnot. So it's gonna have a custom uh, spring rate. Now the springs aren't gonna be a one ton truck anymore. It's just gonna be a, they're gonna be relatively soft for four wheeling and stuff like that. So it's supposed to ride great and do all that stuff. But yeah, we went all out on that. So we ordered everything, all the supporting mods and uh, we got high steer crossover steering coming with the new gear bo uh, steering box, all the good stuff. And this is all from ORD, Off-Road Designs. They're kind of the, probably the, I would guess, or I would say the best, you know, company to order a suspension kit from for these full-size trucks at the moment. So I'm really excited to get that stuff. My bank account is not excited. So <laughs> please like, comment, and subscribe on these videos. I need all the help we can get.